I'm not quite sure what I'll do with this video, but I I think I'm just going to do a lot of um, a lot of making by faces. How's that? All right. I'll wait on this one. So I'm, I'm going to dig into the box again. I added some more pieces. I added some Novaculite. The only thing bad about putting tape all over the holes is that when a flake gets in here, it'll stick to the tape on the inside. Okay. And then from these bifaces, I'm going to probably nap some on video. This is some of the heat treat. If you've been following, you will recognize this one. Uh, what happened to the... Oops. What did I do with the... Scalorn point? You might ask. I deepened the notches. Off camera. I napped it a little bit more, deepened the notches. The ears are not symmetrical. See, that one's longer than that ear, but oh well, it's going in the auction just like this. I think I messed with the tip a little bit also. Okay. Anyway, sorry I hit the camera there. All right. So if I only do bifacing, it's going to be pretty boring for some of you, many of you, I don't know. I was just eating dinner and I was reviewing the last video. I didn't review it before I posted it. I'm posting these overnight. Uh, so when I wake up at night, usually one is already uploaded and I'll, I'll uh, upload the next one or I'll set it to upload, go back to sleep, and then by the time I wake up again, that one's uploaded. So yeah, I wake up in the middle of the night. Every night. It's a leftover from having to wake up every night. Because one of my offspring is having a hard time. You get tuned to be sensitive to wake-ups. Who's up this time? Go check. Go check. TV's on. What's the TV doing on at, at you know 3:25 a.m.? It's just one of the little goober heads just sitting in front of the TV. Got up and started watching TV. I couldn't do that when I was little. My mom would have a fit. But I didn't really mind. I mean, if they're not going to sleep, they're not going to sleep. So yeah, I let the little goober heads watch TV in the middle of the night if they, if they can't sleep. They'll fall asleep on the couch or something. Watching Spongebob. When Spongebob was on 24-7. Something like that. So what is this going to be? It's just going to be a biface for now. If it works out right. Looks like there's a lot of cortex. Should I take the cortex off before I start messing with that other area? Maybe so. I don't really ask myself these questions when I'm just napping. 
Sometimes I make a mistake and I don't do the correct strategic thing. I'm just napping. I'm not discussing it with myself while I'm napping. I used to have a lot of trouble with anxiety. I still have some trouble with anxiety. But meditation helps, you know, clear your mind, make sure you're not thinking about anything. It kind of stabilizes all the hormones or whatever. And uh, I learned to not to not to have anything going through my mind during meditation. That's what it's for. I'm not supposed to have anything going through your mind. You can sit there and stare at something. You can sit there and listen to something. Whatever whatever distracts you from thinking and having a conversation with yourself in your mind. So That's what napping kind of is, sometimes, for me, just a way to meditate. But the anxiety level is get, it's pretty high while napping, so it kind of defeats the purpose sometimes, especially when you're trying to do this to spec or to meet a deadline or to make some money it's a uh, it's not like you can just nap happy go lucky and whatever happens happens you know, I spent the $200 on some some flint I didn't get nothing out of it except some good meditation that's cool huh uh, no <laughs> What can I compare meditation to? It, it's not, it can't just be there by itself. Because, you know, you can meditate for a while or relax and do something relaxing. And then, you know, if, uh, if the phone ringing, if the phone ringing gives you anxiety, doesn't matter how long you've been relaxing, that phone rings and ting, there goes your nerves and you're right back up to, right back up to the, you know, DEFCON, DEFCON 5 or whatever the highest level of alert is, right away, within an instant. So not only do you have to relax, you got to make sure nothing interrupts your relaxation for a long time. Yeah. How often does that happen? I don't know. You can get anxiety just by trying to prevent interruptions. Let's see, what can interrupt me? This little sound or that little sound or this little dog barking or something anyway if you're watching this to get rid of anxiety sorry but I'm probably not helping <laughs> this is probably where the ASMR people don't watch my videos all that often sometimes they do and that's how I found out about the ASMR stuff somebody says this is starting to trigger my ASMR my asthma. Ah, what is that? So I looked it up. Yeah, it's good for anxiety. But you're sitting and watching that and someone someone asks what you're watching, you go, 
I'm just watching something. I'm trying to get rid of anxiety and you just made it worse. <laughs> By asking. Now I gotta explain the whole thing. Or not. Don't bug me. Now I gotta watch it again. Because now I'm on DEFCON 5 or whatever it is. Highest level of alert readiness and anxiety is starting to make my eye twitch again. It only took five seconds. <laughs> is that good enough for a bite face? I think it's good enough for a bite face. I'm going to move on because. I got so much to do, it's not even funny. Not even funny. All right, let's see. Ooh, I hit myself on the little flaker. Mm, yeah, I don't like them little bitty pieces. I like to look at them, but I don't like them in the box, but I throw them in the box anyway. Until I can convince myself that, yeah, there's no way I can make something out of that one. You sure? Yeah, I can't do nothing with it. Wow, you can do something. I bet you that's an earring size. What the heck is going on? Because usually this stuff naps pretty good. Unless it's raw. Raw Tecovis Jasper is not that easy. I think this one's a raw piece. Yeah. That's not good. I started hammering on the raw piece and I might, I might end up just ruining it all. So we'll put that one back. Much easier to deal with when it's easy to nap. Don't have to suffer through the hard stuff. Okay, by face. Let's see. See these jumped out? You saw that, right? All that mess. I hit down here and these jumped out that way. And only, only got a little flake that side. You didn't catch it? Ah, you missed it. Why does it do that? That's called napping physics. Stuff you wouldn't think would happen. Napping physics. I used to call it strange physics. Because when you're napping, things really strange happen you wouldn't think would happen. And yeah, I used to make things. Before I was a flint napper, I used to make some stuff. I used to make do woodworking stuff. I did some drawings. I made stuff. It's a good question. What did I make before I... I don't even remember what I... Oh yeah, I made bows and arrows when I was little. But I didn't nap the arrowheads when I was little. I just sharpened the wood. Funny how that works. Anyway. That was one of the things I used to make. Oh yeah, scale models, little scale models. 132 scale, 172 scale, 148 scale. Airplanes, mostly military stuff. Airplanes and tanks. And I think I made one battleship, but that was like 144th scale or whatever they got. Anyway. Yeah, before flint napping. BF. It's not like flint napping is not like those other making things hobbies. Oh no. It's weird.
Yeah. You're dealing with risk. It's almost it's like a sport rather than a, a hobby. Although you can have a sport as a hobby, this is I guess this qualifies. Dang it. I would like to hit the turtle back off with some direct percussion, but it's not cooperating. Here we go. Did it go? It didn't go. Hmm. I don't know if it's hornstone or not behaving. Usually hornstone is behaves well. But there's different grades of it. You know, I can tell you how great hornstone is and you order some and you're the only one on the planet that got the box of hornstone from from Hades. The only one in the world that got the hornstone from Hades. Just so happened to be you when you send me an email. You know that hornstone? Here, look, there's pictures of right here. I hit it. I hit it with a sledgehammer and didn't do nothing. I hit it with two sledgehammers and didn't do nothing twice. I finally hit it. So hard that my false teeth fell out. And this is what happened. Broke right in half. Perfectly in half. I measured it. <laughs> yeah. First it don't do anything and then it breaks exactly in half. Where have I seen that before? Has it happened to me? Hmm. I did, cause it couldn't happen to you, dude. Because, you know, if it did, you'd never continue napping. You would have given up. Just like that dude that sent you pictures of Hornstone from Hades. He gave up. Yep. I might have. But if I can survive gravel chert, bull rock, raw with uh, natural tools for a whole year, yeah, pretty much can face anything. I mean, I wasn't happy about it. It's like, is this what I need to do to get get some marrow heads? Is this how it's going to be? I guess so. That's how it's going to be. It's going to challenge every fiber of my being <laughs> every being of my fiber <laughs> yeah oh yes almost done with this particular piece but this is not cooperating like I was hoping but I'll get it there yeah I'm gonna use one of them special techniques pretty soon here I'm going to use one of them special techniques it's gonna look a little bit odd You know, it's not going to be supported by any archaeology. Okay, watch out, I'm going to start using it. Dude, you've already been using it through the whole video. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been using the secret technique. Yep. Through the whole video. And you thought I had another technique, huh? <laughs> I'm 
nope, this is it. This is a secret technique. This is my secret. I could have been sneaky all these years and just pop up on YouTube 10 years later and say, here's stuff I've been making over the past 10 years. I'm not going to show you how I did it. Nope. I'm not going to show you. How different would flip napping be? I know how I know how it was when I started. Yeah. Everyone's probably everyone's doing it basically the same. Big old tarps. Noisy crackly tarps and big old boppers, big old hammer stones, big old pressure flakers. Everything's big old, big old, big old, everything. And the more big old you could make your tool, the more big old bad flip napper you were. Yep. I looked around and uh, when I first started napping, any of you guys make a little teeny arrowheads like they have in the museum? Those little bitty ones? Oh, you mean the ones they call bird points? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. No, we don't make those. We can't. We can, but we don't make them. Why don't you make them? Well, you know, no one wants to buy them. Ah, okay. Besides, you can find them. Really? Where do you, where do you find them? Well, you used to be able to find them. It just so happens you got in a little late to be a flint napper collector, flint napper slash collector like us. Yeah, we got them all from this area. Found most of them already. None of us can find any more. Either that or we're shut out from the land that we used to hunt. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'll make the little ones. I'll make the little teeny arrowheads. Okay. Everything's cool. I'm going to use a little bitty hammer stones. I'm going to use a little bitty flakers. Okay. And there it goes. The rest is history. Okay, that's good enough for that one. I'm going a little bit slow here. I need to do like uh, uh, four or five in 30 minutes. Yeah, except that that one piece of hornstone was not very cooperative, so it took a little extra time. I'm drifting off into into in, into other thought processes. I broke this last night. Ooh, that made me angry. That was the last thing I did. So yep, yeah, that's it. I'm quitting for tonight. You get angry when you're flint napping? Of course. It's a beautiful piece of root beer. And uh, I had no reason to do it. Well, I did have a reason because I wanted to remove a big old lump or something right there. That was the last strike right there. 
it removed it. Oh yes. That'll go in the brokes and buy faces for the auction. I don't mess with those anymore. Let's see. I guess I should because I can still make stuff from those. I just don't want the memory of it breaking, rearing up its ugly head right in the middle of when I'm flint napping. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, it might be bad luck. But nah, it's not really bad luck. What it is is just, I don't want to remember how it broke. Because I still, I got to be aggressive with it. I can't start slacking off and saying, well, I can't be as aggressive anymore because I just broke that beautiful piece. No, you got to keep being aggressive because sometimes that's the only way to get through these obstacles. You know, everything's got a turtle back these days. Everything. It's not really napping until you can thin down to really thick and keep the thin from snapping. We keep Keep the snapping away from away from the napping. Keep the snapping away from the napping. Take big wax. On them turtle backs. This is a nice Texas chert. Yep, beautiful stuff. Not quite as nice as true flint. True flint will carry those flakes a long ways. More like that, yeah. But a little bit better than that. A true flint will probably be much easier to run the, that flake all the way. All the way until that end of that ridge right there instead of stopping right there. That's what I see. Yeah. What causes ripples like that? Something wrong with the flaker. It's got pits in it or something, just some damage to it or something wrong with the platform. It was a little bit chattery. That's what I think. Because some of these flakes real smooth, some of them real ripply. Same stone, very close to each other. What could it be? Same flaker, same area. I'm hitting the same area on the flaker on the stone. Same, everything same, same, same. And yet, two different flakes entirely. Or so they say. These days, if you have a range of, of occurrences or a range of symptoms or it's a range of things, it's on a spectrum. These flakes are on a spectrum. Varying degrees of rippling. Yeah. So, the, you know, each flake has a potential to do the rippling thing or not. It's just going to be a little bit random on whether it does a rippling or not. OK. 
Can you get them all to ripple or an all not to ripple? I don't know if you can get them to do that, but there is, there is ways to make one or the other more favorable, I guess. The conditions more favorable for one or the other. I guess, if you can figure it out with your particular setup. Yeah, I think you can, you can try to eliminate a lot of the rippling if you don't like it. By, you know, perfect platforms. Perfect uh, surfaces on your striking tool or pressure tool. Can you get rippling with pressure? Oh yes. Why am I getting into the rippling thing? I just saw that someone asking about the rippling on Facebook or something. Yeah, I still get on Facebook even though I took most of my photos down in protest because Facebook sells your life to the world or whatever. I won't mention anything specific. All right, so I'm out of time. Just did a few little bifaces. This still has a real thick spot, but this is not difficult to thin down. Yeah, I didn't do that on video. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll get a little thumbnail or a photograph. Okay.